Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. This is my bar, <laughs> or at least all of the whiskey contents in it. Now I, I do like to do these videos every year. It's fun uh, just to see what's in here still. Now I have an organization thing going on in my bar right now where all of the bottles on one side are ones I re reviewed before and I can just drink at my leisure, or all the ones on the other side are the ones I haven't reviewed and I could still totally drink but don't finish. <laughs> so um, a lot of these are kind of in both camps. So some of these are going to look familiar, some of them are going to look a little bit new, and at least then you'll know what I'm planning on reviewing in the upcoming future. So why don't I just kind of go through all of this and, and show you what I've got. So I'll make this part a little easy. I've got all of the Game of Thrones bo um, bottles, and I plan on reviewing those actually fairly quickly towards the beginning of, of January, February, and I'll try not to overbear with all of them, but they're not going to be my normal reviews. Like for example, um, there's a Talisker, not Talisker, actually there, there is a Talisker, but there's a Lagavulin 9 in here, and I have not done Lagavulin yet. So I'm just going to talk about the whiskey. I won't talk about the actual uh, brand and all that. But <clears throat> anyway, so I've got all of those. Then I have a uh, McClellan's, which I've had for a long time. Uh, might even just kind of finish that bottle and buy a new one if I ever decide to do a video on them. Um, still have some Ardbeg hanging around. I've got the Oogadale left. I finished the Cory Vreckin a few nights ago. I've got the Anno still hanging around. Um, the 10 is long gone. Then I've got the Copper Dog, which is about half gone. Kind of wait until it gets a little warmer because as you may remember from the video, I actually found that this goes really, really well with peach tea. And I found that was just a really fun drink to drink. Peach tea doesn't really go so well in the middle of winter in Massachusetts. <laughs> so, uh, Glen Morangi 10, we've got the Bowmore 15, I've done an episode on that. Highland Park 15, this was sent to me by a viewer, and from what I understand, they are currently not making it. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they come out again with it, but I did try this the other day, it's very good. So, um, I've got my Johnny Walker Black and my Johnny Walker Red still, of course. This thing will never leave my bar. <laughs> I uh, want it to, but it never will. All right, then I've um, got the Lefroig quarter cask here as well, and that does it for scotch. I don't have a ton of scotch. Then I have some Irish, um, Napog Castle. Um, this is the 12, I believe. Uh, yep, 12. <clears throat> then I have a couple of Glendalock or Glendalo, I forget how to pronounce that properly, Glendalo. Um, I, they're actually both the two different types of seven years that they do. And I was given this other bottle by um, Donnell, who is the marketing director. Um, he's one of the co-owners of the company. And I saw him at a tasting and he he's seen my videos. He just hands me the bottle. He says, here, do this on your show. <laughs> and then that was it. He went back to doing what he was doing. So I'm actually going to probably do a comparison between the old seven and the new seven and see how they stack up. I suspect that the new seven is a lot better. Um, looks like I have tried it, but I do not remember too much about it. Anyway, I've got two Egan's. Now Egan's is a younger distillery in Ireland. So this is a single grain. Um, and then this one is a uh, single malt. So I've tried both of them. This one's 10 years. This one's vintage grain. I'm going to do my formal review on them, but I actually really like both of them. Um, and they're fairly inexpensive. So if you see them, just you can pick them up and know that you're you're going to get something good. Uh, I've got Suntory whiskey here, which I've tried to write the episode on a couple of times. Um, haven't been blown away by just anything super interesting about the brand other than that it's you know very well high selling or whatever but we'll see i'm gonna get around to writing the episode again too but i'd like to do a little bit more japanese whiskey this year i've got the amaru uh fusion i just got this the other day from one of my co-workers she came over to my house for a party and dropped that off and i was very appreciative so um it's funny i told everybody i said you know nobody bring anything um but if you insist on bringing something my wife likes red wine and uh, everybody brought red wine as I was very appreciative once again, but she also included this for me. <laughs> so I was pretty happy about that. Uh, moving along to the rise. So I have Ragtime Rye, which was sent to me along with the Napog Castle and both Egan bottles. It's all kind of represented by the same um, umbrella. And uh, I don't remember really much about this one, but half the bottle's gone, so it can't suck. <laughs> um, of course, Pikesville. And then uh, let's see what else do I have for rye. Uh, rye. Rye one, which once again, I've had this in my bar forever. 
I have never done an episode on it and I'm not even sure that they make it anymore. I haven't seen it in a long time. If that's the case, I'll just end up finishing the bottle. I probably won't do a review of it. It's not really worth doing reviews of stuff that you guys can't get your hands on. All right, um, at least from my point of view. So then I can move along to my bourbons, which I have a lot more of. Um, so of course, Elmer T. Lee, uh, which if you, you know, saw my, my uh, best whiskey of the year kind of thing, you'll, you'll know that this was on the list, the short list. Um, I have Old Ezra 7, which I have not opened yet. Now that was from a fan as well. I do intend on doing a review of that, but haven't gotten a chance to. Um, I've got uh, Eleanor, 19, uh, was it 1860? I always forget what they call it. Um, I think it's the, it's either the 1960, I think it's the 1960, whatever, something 60. <laughs> and then uh, New Riff bourbon, which is really, really good. I have the um, Iron Root Republic. This is the Harbinger XC. I just did a review of that recently. I like this one. Um, I actually like that one more than the other regular Harbinger, surprisingly. I have the Blackened, although this one's almost gone. That's the Metallica Whiskey. I have Willet. I have a bottle of Blanton's, which I'll be reviewing. I actually keep chomping at the bit to review that one because I know how good it is. And I keep going through the bottle. <laughs> uh, I've got a bottle of Wiggly Bridge here, which is a bourbon from York, Maine. I've got Knob Creek, a um, couple of Jefferson's. This is just the regular Jeff Jefferson. And then I have the Jefferson Aged at Sea. Um, Jefferson Ocean. This is voyage number 13, so it's a little bit getting back there, but I need to do a review on that. My favorite thing about Jefferson's Ocean is it's basically the culmination of being an overly pretentious whiskey drinker and, and just being like, oh, this whiskey has traveled the world. It's, it's better that way. I, it's just, I'm sure it's cool. And honestly, that's what attracted me to it. I did buy that one myself just on a whim because I was interested it piqued my interest but i also realize how ridiculous it is so anyway uh two bookers back here i have the 2018-01 and the 2018-03 still um i have the iron root promethean the regular iron root uh, harbinger i have bullet bourbon um barrel strength still surprisingly um, that one's actually, I'm, I, I've barely drank that one. That's surprising because I actually liked that one. And then of course, Larceny is going away very quickly. And then this guy. So I saved this one for last on purpose. So this was a Maker's Mark Private Select. It's signed by Greg Davis, which I think is very cool. This was sent to me by a viewer as well. And it's not one that I'll ever really review on the channel other than more just the concept of it. If I ever end up reviewing Maker's Mark again, maybe I'll bring this up as a thing that you can do. But you can go to Maker's Mark and get your own stuff done. Um, a very cool thing. So. Those are all the whiskeys that I currently have in my cabinet, and I'm sure I will have more coming very soon in the near future. And I uh, often find that I'm lacking space, so I often give bottles away to people who, who come to <laughs> visit my house, uh, so much so that my wife has started referring to my, my filmed bottles of whiskeys as parting gifts, because that tends to be how they go out of my house. So. Um, most of the bottles that you have seen me reviewed, I have not killed myself. I usually just share the wealth. So anyway, this is what I currently have in my bar at the very start of 2019. And I would imagine I'll do another one of these videos beginning of 2020. If not, maybe I'll do one halfway through the year. We'll see how fast the turnover is. But um, let me just say that I am fairly determined to make this Johnny Walker Red no longer be in my bar. So... Cheers to you. Mm. My God, that's terrible. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Have a great rest of your night. Oof, I might not. <laughs> Cheers.